So you're new to a Kamado grill and you wanna learn how to get started. Welcome to the patio, my name's Jake. You're watching Ramen Cook. Today on the channel, we're talking about Kamado style grills. In particular, the first five cooks you should do on a Kamado style grill. Now look, these can be intimidating at first, but I guarantee you, get 10 cooks into you, get used to how the vents work. It's pretty simple once you get used to it. Now, you're gonna be able to fine tune and hone in your skills over time, but after about five cooks, you're really gonna have a good idea of how it works and you're gonna be comfortable playing with it. From there, it only gets better. When we look at our cooks, you wanna start with some of the easier ones, ones that don't take necessarily as long so that you can get used to adjusting your temperatures. Cook number one, personal favorite, not even smoking, but I guarantee if you do this one, you're gonna be doing a lot, pizza. Pizza on a Kamado style grill is absolutely amazing. I like to tell people when I'm making pizza on this, it requires a fine glass of red wine because it's that good. Now, why is it so good? Well, Kamado style grills use lump flavor, but we also have this ceramic material that heats up. And what we end up doing is we usually put our pizza up closer in the dome. So now we've got some dome heat radiating into our pizza and it's cooking it from all around and it just tastes delicious. The one thing I'll tell you is don't jump to a 900 degree pizza or anything like that. My favorite way to do pizza on this and don't buy pizza dough from the grocery store, go to your local pizza place. Some of them makes a decent pizza. Ask them if you can buy some dough. They'll usually sell it for five bucks. Come home, you got some dough. What I'll do is I like to get this dome temperature around 450, 475, and you cook a pizza in about eight minutes. It'd be a thicker crust pizza, kind of like you get, you know, a traditional style thickness of pizza. And I'll tell you what, it's delicious. Anyone I've ever made pizza on is talking about this for weeks, months, sometimes after it, because they want to have pizza again. Highly recommend you try that for your first cook. When it comes down to the second cook, well, if you don't have one, get yourself a rotisserie. Rotisserie chicken, over lump, throw in some smoking wood in there just to get some background flavors. It's delicious. It's super quick takes you 45 minutes, maybe 50 minutes. Again, dome temperature around 450. Getting used to playing with some hotter uh, temperatures and, you know, open up your vents in the bottom, open up your vents up top, get your temperatures dialed in, throw your food on, and away you go. Now we've got some of the hotter, faster cooks out of the way. We can get into playing with some smoking wood. First cook, I would say, is ribs. Ribs are relatively forgiving. If you overcook them, the worst thing that happens is they get a little fall off the bone and mushy. You wanna try and avoid that. Ideally, pick them up and they should have a little bit of bend to them, but not too much. Probably in that 200 degree mark if you're gonna try and test them with a thermometer, get yourself a good thermometer. Uh, but then you can play with a little bit of smoke and you know, if you overcook them, it's really not the end of the world. One thing about smoke, a little goes a long way. So when you're putting together your basket, and this applies to all Komodos, put about 90, 95% lump and five to 10% wood. Don't be putting a whole bunch of chunks of wood in there, or you may like it, but your family probably won't like it. It'll be way too smoky for them. So I've got a bunch of videos about getting clean smoke. That's very important. But the one thing I'll tell you in this video is just don't put too much wood in. Start with a little bit, get some cooks in, and then you can step up your smoke a little bit. But again, you're really not gonna go past that 10% wood. It just gets way too smoky and you're not gonna enjoy it. Cook number four is a long cook, usually seven, nine, 11 hours depending on how big your pork butt is. You'll find it referred to as a pork shoulder, pork butt. Start with the bone-in. Bone-in is a little bit easier and you're gonna get uh, just a more uniform shape. It doesn't really taste any different, but bone-in is kind of the go-to. 
in uh, traditional barbecue for the most part. That's what everyone kind of starts with. If you get a boneless, then you've got to start to tie it up and, and bunch it together. So it just cooks better if it's a bone in. But the great thing about that is you can turn it into pulled pork sandwiches, you can do tacos, uh, you can shred it up and put it on quesadillas. I mean, it's got a lot of different things you can use it for. And it's one of the most forgiving cooks out there when you're just getting used to smoking. Because, you know, if you overcook it, it, it it'll take it. It's not, real, it's not really going to hurt it. Uh, ideally, you want to get it done in that 202 to 205. You've got to probe tender, watch a bunch of videos on it. But, you know, even if you undercook it or overcook it, it's, it's not going to be terrible. It's still going to be good. And you're going to get a, a chance to be able to play with your vents and learn how a little adjustment will go a long way. It really doesn't take a lot of air change, air movement change to affect your temperature. So, that'll give you the chance just to kind of do a long cook and start to really hone in your skills a little bit and you're gonna have a ton of pork right because most pork butts are you know eight nine ten pounds somewhere in there our last and final cook we're getting gonna get into that beef world and really it's gonna be beef ribs get yourself three bone dino ribs they're absolutely delicious and they still are relatively forgiving it's gonna be a shorter cook six to eight hours but you're still going to get time to play with some smoking wood play with your temperatures and learn how to dial it in watch some videos on beef ribs because they uh you know they're a little bit more advanced they are forgiving but if you watch some videos on them you'll get them a little bit more dialed in for your first cook now that you got your first five cooks out of the way you can start to do some other things that require a little bit more effort a little bit more skill everyone wants to go to a brisket Look, you're gonna have good briskets. You're gonna have terrible briskets, especially when you're starting out. Uh, I haven't cooked a ton of brisket, 20, 22, 23, somewhere in there. Not a ton, but I've had some great ones and I've had some terrible ones. And sometimes I've been scratching my head trying to figure out what I did wrong. Don't get discouraged. Barbecue is about having fun. You're gonna learn something from every single cook, whether it be good or bad, learn it. Don't make the mistake again and just get better. Barbecue is fun. Remember that. To help you get started on the right foot for your Kamado Grill, check out this video below. These are the 12 mistakes that you should avoid on a Kamado style grill. Should find it super helpful. If you're not subscribed yet, please do so below. Support the channel. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. Thanks as always for watching. I'll see you soon.